Hello everybody, it is me, Civic. A viewer requested that I do a video on the value of stay-at-home mothers. She also asked if a woman is not married and does not intend to have children, is it okay for her to go to work? Let's ask, answer the second question first. Because of the times that we live in and because of the necessity of having to buy food and pay rent and bills, if a woman has no husband, has no children, she has no choice but to go to work unless she has somebody kind enough, family members, to take care of her. I don't believe it's a sin for a woman to work. When I said in my other video <clears throat> about women that they don't belong in the workplace, I believe that. I believe that in context of the huge rise in affairs, women competing against men and all the other dynamics that go on. For a long time, women used to work <clears throat> in environments way back. They typically stayed more. Women were nurses in hospitals and stuff like that. Now today, they're at the office, they're at a factory, they're at car dealerships, they're all over the place. But a person has to make a living. There's no way around that. But what does Pacific think about a stay-at-home mother? A mother who chooses because her husband is making enough or the husband husband says, I may not be making a ton of money, but I want you to stay home and raise the kids. What do the feminists say about that? Feminists don't value a stay-at-home mother. In fact, if anything over the years, I've heard out of my own ears Women tell other women, oh, you can't stay home. That's demeaning. You need to go and get a job. Put your kids in daycare. Have somebody else take care of them. Good advice, feminist. That's why our kids don't care. That's why they know that they're throwaway and they're bonding with somebody else. Video games, TV set, materialism, the daycare center, and a host of other things, and who knows what. The value of a woman who stays at home with her children <clears throat> with the intent of raising them with manners, morals, and a God-centered perspective, loving them, giving them the nurture and the safe incubatory environment that they need as children to get through when they get 18 is going to be a tough-as-nails world. A woman like that is worth an in estimable amount of money. Excuse me. <clears throat> Women that stay home and raise their kids are doing more productive good than the woman who's a career woman who's a, a successful CEO of a multi-million dollar corporation. And here's why. The megalomaniac woman who wants to grab the reins of control and power and be CEO of a corporation is making money for herself and her own ego. What she's doing is not going to have a lasting legacy on people or God's point of view for eternity. A woman who raises children to fear the Lord, a woman who raises children with love in her home is worth far more than 50 feminists who did it their way. By the way, for those of you <clears throat> that like nostalgic music, I do too. I have a problem with Frank Sinatra's I Did It My Way. I don't mean to be rude or passe, but I wonder if he's whistling that tune in the Lake of Fire right now. I don't think so. I really, really get annoyed at feminists. I was reading, I don't know why I was doing this because it really depresses me. I was reading the ads on a date site today just for kicks and giggles. 20 year old woman claiming to be a Christian. This was an ad about herself. This is what it said. I, I drive a pickup truck. I'm into football and hockey. I want a guy only 20 to 24 years old. He must be athletic, well built, in great shape, and he must have a very super great paying job. I wrote her back and I said, I think you want, uh, I think what, you, what you're describing is you, you seem more male than lady. And I said, you bring God in this. I said, I would challenge you to read your Bible and show me where you're supposed to 
base your desire for a man on how much he makes versus love. I guarantee you, viewers, I will get a nasty FU email. I cannot believe how many women play games on these dating sites, and you read their ads. A 57-year-old woman, <clears throat> tattoos all down her arms. She thinks she's hot, says so in her own ad, that she's well put together and has a successful business, and she says, I don't have any children. I don't want anybody who has any children. Hmm, 57 years old, okay. And she goes, and you better like my teacup poodle, because if you don't, then that's going to be a problem. I wrote her and I said, what do you want, a man or a dog? If you're going to have to make your priorities. You love dog, you love man, not love dog. <clears throat> she also said, God bless, and I'm a Christian, and yada, yada. And I said, yeah, with the tattoos all over your arms. And I know my viewers will say, well, maybe she got those before she was a Christian. I understand all that. But I said to her, you sound like a high maintenance. Oh, by the way, she's 5'9", and she demands somebody six foot plus. I said, let me know how successful you are on finding the Taj Mahal on Craigslist when you are not the Taj Mahal yourself. There are times I respond to ads, not with the intent of getting a date, but just sticking my finger in their eye and saying, who do you think you are? What does this have to do with women staying at home and raising their children? Everything. When I read data ads, I don't see women saying, I want a man I can cook for. I want a man I can massage his back for. I want a man that I love so much that when he comes home, he feels my love. He feels that he's coming home to a safe, peaceful refuge. Have you seen any ads on a dating site like that, men or women? And women, ask yourself a question when you've posted on a dating site. You're always saying what you want in a man, but you're never saying what you can give. What I read is arrogance. I'm very intellectual. I want somebody that connects with me on an intellectual level. I'm witty. I'm funny. Some of my friends think I'm very good looking, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Nothing in the ad or the post that says, here's what I'm going to give the man that I meet that's special to me. Not a but she's got all her requirements. <clears throat> this is what feminism does to women. This is what happens when women throw their kids in daycare. And this is, this is the way we live. You know, we talk about <clears throat> you can order pizza and some teenage kid in a car comes zipping and speeding through the neighborhoods to deliver you your pizza so you can watch your videos. You can go rent a U-Haul truck and move your stuff <clears throat> across the country we're in an instant generation, and women call themselves mothers because they have children, but there is a big difference, ladies, between two words, mom and mother. I always referred to the lady that adopted me as mother, <clears throat> not mom. Mom is affectionate. Mom implies warmth, love, and nurture. Mother implies stern, domineering. And I look at today's feminist woman, and all that I see today is a lot of these women throw their kids in daycare, or the jet set woman, I gotta have my designer children, or I gotta adopt Chinese children from China, or these foreign kids so I can look passe. And what are they teaching their kids? They've got a his and hers SUV. A lot of these women don't need to work, but they work anyway, and the kids are sacrificed. I really get angry at feminists mocking and making fun of any woman that chooses to do things God's way. There's a verse here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, and it says in verse 15, But women shall be preserved through the bearing of children if they continue in faith and love and sanctity with self-restraint. Guys and girls, I don't see women with self-restraint today. Not on your life. And you know what's sad? Today's women are in your face, rebellious, baseball cap wearing, hockey loving, football screaming fanatics. Drinking, smoking, putting tattoos and piercings all over themselves. And what's sad is they're having children. And those children are growing up, becoming lesbian and gay and everything because 
today's jet set women have no place for the antiquated idea, what they call antiquated idea of the Bible and God. And it's even infected the church today that women today think that they're liberated in Christ and they can do whatever they want. In fact, feminism has gotten such a toehold in the church that women are yelling, arguing, screaming at, and demanding that their husbands be godly men. Otherwise, they will not submit to them. And pastors are encouraging this rotten, in-your-face, rebellious behavior by today's women. In fact, women today that are writing the big books and hosting the seminars that all the middle-class white Christian women go to, they're not encouraging women to be submissive. They're not encouraging women to be uh, non-materialistic. They're not encouraging women to live by this at all. They're just marketing some little cutesy Jesus sayings here and there. And there are some stuff out there, but most of it, by and large, is not dealing with women's issues the way it ought to be. I'll tell you what. I do not have the right to be in a pulpit, but if somebody puts me there, I'm going to stand up and say what people need to hear, not what they want to hear, and they would fire me in short order. That's okay. They always need a bus driver somewhere. Women, you women that stay at home, God is going to bless you for that. God is going to bless you for attempting to raise your children in Christian stead. He's going to bless you for showing them and giving them the real love. A lot of women raise children, and they're fake, and they're condescending, and they don't mold them the way they should mold them. Most, most people today are trying to make their kids into what they want them to be instead of what God wants them to be. Or, in the cases of many women, they just kind of let their children raise themselves, and then they wonder later on why they're getting into this and getting into that. Well, duh, you didn't exactly give them much direction now, did you? Here, watch the TV for eight hours. I got stuff to do. Don't bother me. Women that stay at home and raise their children. I'm not talking about the women that are on welfare that are godless, that do not believe, and get free assistance to sit in front of the TV all day and give their kids popsicles and junk food. I'm not talking about those. Because there are women that stay at home with their children, but they're not mentoring and raising their children in a very good, exemplified way. But those women that take the time to raise their children and love their kids and those kids know beyond shadow of a doubt, my mother loves me. Those are the ones that have the highest position in America today. I don't care about Hillary Rodham Clinton's credentials or Nancy Pelosi's or Beth Moore's or Joyce Myers or any of these self-made women promoting themselves. And yes, Christianity does not exempt people from the selfish treadmill that they peddle so hard. Christian women today want to be successful. They want to market their ego, their books, and make millions of dollars and have their SUV and their comfortable lifestyle. I'm tired of it. Women that are raising their children with the fear of the Lord. Women who, <clears throat> what does it say in, in Proverbs 31? Charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. The woman who wrote me asking me to make this video, that is what you are doing. If you are called to raise your children, and you've been blessed to be able to do so, you will be blessed by God. That is an act of obedience. I don't care what the feminists say. The feminists are wrong on almost all points. And one of the things that we need to realize is that we Christians have been bullied, verbally abused by the feminist community in this country, and we are kowtowing to their politically correct BS, and we need to stop it. I look at the kids that get on my school bus all day. I've been working with children for years. I look at the way people are on the roads. I look at what TV is doing and what they're promoting. I look at what rock music is doing and promoting. I look at our evening news and what they consider newsworthy and what they consider not newsworthy. And I look at the spin that they're doing. And I sit there and go, and people have the gall to attack a stay-at-home mother and put her down. A viewer from Sweden wrote me <clears throat> about a year ago. 
saying, I'm a stay-at-home mom and I'm a Christian, and as you probably know, Sweden is just like America. They're very liberal. <coughs> and women here look down on me for being home with my children. I wrote her back and I said, pay no mind to that. I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember exactly how I said it. But I said, you are doing an honorable thing. You keep your head high and you keep doing what you're doing. You will be blessed by God. Women, do not be bullied and backed up against the fence by the feminists. Do you know what the name is for Jesus? The Lion of the tribe of Judah. That doesn't mean we run around and attack and yell and scream. But women, if you put your faith and trust in Christ, you have the heart of a lion. And a lion is brave. And a lion is strong. That doesn't mean you're competing against men. But it means you look these feminists right in the eye and confidently say, you go ahead and mock me. We both stand before God one day and I can't wait to see your report cards for being a successful feminist versus me trying to mold these children to show respect and be a productive member of society and not more cancer and problems. <clears throat> the value of the American family is hugely underrated in today's culture and all I see on Craigslist, all I see on dating sites, all I see out there is everything coming apart at the seams. And for those of you feminists that say I'm so negative, no, I'm going to boomerang it right back at you. You feminists are nothing but negative current all through this society. You are giving nothing positive to American society. You are contributing not one good, eternal, lasting, positive difference to American culture or any woman of the world to, quote, tell everybody the lie that you're liberated. I watch feminist women, and they are anything but liberated. I don't see the joy on their faces. I don't see true happiness on them. What I see is them making fun of and mocking others that are weaker than them. I see them competing and being competitive, which is not the calling of a woman by God. <clears throat> I don't see women being submissive. I don't see them being sweet. I don't see them being humble. I don't see them being ladylike in physical appearance or when they open their mouths. Now, I'm not saying that every woman in America is a battle axe feminist. But I'll tell you what, it has infected the church. Feminism is the pus that has infected the church. Women today are not submitting to their husbands. By the way, I want to thank you, ladies. There are several of you. More and more Christian women are showing up on my site. I'm encouraged by that. Thank you for watching and listening to what I have to say and not running thinking I'm a man-hater. I do not promote men to behave wrongfully to their wives. I do not promote violent acts by men towards their wives. Men, if you have a wife like that, you better get down on your knees and thank God and you go home and give that woman a hug and you appreciate and love her. Because when you go to work every day, look around at the women you work with and let me tell you something. You may be tempted, but you don't want to live with them. They ain't going to fix you a home-cooked meal and scratch your back and wash your socks and put your stuff away and help raise your children. You better thank God for that woman because this is the last dinosaur. This is the last brontosaurus. Now they call it a potosaurus. They changed the name of that too. Good grief. God will always have his standard, but clearly we're seeing the erosion of American society. I will say it again. You heard me, Civic, say it. I don't care how good-looking the feminist is. I don't care how confident she is. I don't care if she stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with me or any other man says, you're just afraid of an intelligent, smart woman. No, I'm not. But I am not finding any. And what bothers me is feminists have the audacity to say that I'm intelligent and good-looking. Ah, you might be good-looking, but you're not intelligent if you believe in all of the philosophies of feminism and think that that's beneficial to society. That is not intelligence. That's brainwashed. And I would come back to it and say, therefore, you are very dumb. You know, men and women, we need to turn this ship around. We're not going to change the feminists. We're not going to change any of them. But we need to, as Christians, start standing together with one another and saying, you know what? You can have your little sinking ship party over here. And you may believe you're headed the right direction. But we ain't going to give it to that. 
I'll tell you what, I hate feminism. And I love it when women accuse me of being misogynistic. Women don't like to be told this, but women by nature are rebellious. Why do you think God said, wives, submit to your husbands? Because it is not in their nature to do that. It is in their nature to rebel the authority of a man. That happened when Eve ate the fruit and said no to God's prohibition against eating that. Man has a problem <clears throat> with loving his wife. And he tends to rebel against that. Men tend to be selfish and want to do their own thing and spend their money and get in their little man cave all the time. And they need to stop that too. But a good woman is hard to find. And a lot of good men are hard to find. Fair is fair. I've been banging a lot on the feminist culture in this country. It is highly destructive what they have done and are doing. And they're not waking up to it. The Bible says the God of this world has blinded their eyes. Now, I'm not taking that out of context. It, it, when I say it's blinded the eyes of the feminist, it doesn't say in the Bible, blinded the eyes of the feminist. It's blinded their eyes, the people of the world. Feminists are people of the world. And they're not going to believe the truth because they're not interested in truth. The only truth that they want to be told over and over again, and it's not truth, it's brainwashed. Men are bad, women are supreme. This is not about equality. It's never been about equality in the last 30 years. It's now about, let's get rid of all the men, let's turn the men into our servants and slaves, and they can do what we want, or we're going to have nothing to do with them. A woman wrote me on my site saying, you're the one that can't get a girlfriend, you're the one that's useless, we're the ones that have the upper hand because everybody wants us. <laughs> you know what, I'm very happy to report to you, ma'am, that the Bible says pride goeth before a fall. They said the Titanic was unsinkable, and you're obviously saying the same thing. Watch out, lady, an iceberg is headed near you soon. Women that stay at home, God hears your heart. He knows your frustrations. Raising kids is tough work. That's why most women go to a job every day instead of raising their kids. They don't want to do it. Most feminist women do not know how to teach their kids values. They don't want to teach their kids morals and right from wrong. They only want to teach them what they believe is right and wrong. They don't want to do it God's way. It's very hard. So it's easier for women to rebel, go to work, get a job, buy an SUV, have latte and gossip like a bunch of hen house hens with their lady friends. Now I'm not saying there aren't feminists that don't raise their children. But they're not raising them as under the Lord. So it's all for naught. I'm going to say something bold, and it's time. This book right here, it, it lays it out. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. For you women out there that are feminist, I don't care how intellectual you think you are and how many degrees you have. If you don't have the fear of the Lord in you, you don't have wisdom and you don't operate on true knowledge and you cannot and are incapable of giving anything beneficial to society because Bible says unless the Lord builds the house they that labor to build labor in vain what does that mean that everything that Pacific or any woman any Christian or non-Christian anything that people do that is not sanctioned and ordained by God will ultimately fail and turn to sand. Why? Because it's not built on the foundation. You want wisdom? You want true intellect and knowledge? You start with God. Not college, not feminism, not Planned Parenthood, not Hillary Clinton and all the other liberal wags. You start with God. And any woman that submits to God and raises her children and loves her husband, submits to him, and raises those children, and prays to God, and reads her Bible, that is a noble woman. How dare you feminists attack and put that down? You guys have it all wrong. You follow Satan, and you follow the philosophies of Satan. The philosophies of Satan are very simple. 
don't submit to God's commands. Don't submit to God's laws. You do your own thing. You have choice. Well, guess what the devil said to Eve? You have a choice. God doesn't want you to eat it because you'll be enlightened. Good job, Eve. You ate the fruit. Now your eyes are open and look what you did. Adam, too. I want to ask you all something. Can you imagine being naked with your loved one? Perfect temperature. You're neither hot nor cold. No shame. And you don't have to sweat and operate equipment and work eight hours a day and pay taxes. Your food is right there growing on trees. Perfect organic food with no pesticides. There's a cheesy song and I don't like it, but it's true. They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Do you know how sad that is? Go to, into any city, and I know Pacific loves Hong Kong, but even when I was there, I got spiritual and said, you know, all of this is a waste of time. It says in Revelation, there was an earthquake so great, one has not been like it before, that the cities of the nations fell. And I stood there and pictured that. All of Hong Kong sitting in Victoria Harbor. Rubble. We men are puny beings indeed. What does all this have to do with a stay-at-home mom? Everything. Because men and women build their skyscrapers and point them and thrust them into the heavens. God will tear them down. What a woman who fears the Lord and raises her children in the admonition of the Lord, that will not be torn down, that will not be taken away from her. She will have reward for eternity. And you feminists may get your college degrees and mount them on your wall, and you may be successful and get your 401k in retirement and make your choices and do whatever you want, but there's a day of reckoning coming and you will pay for your choices. And you will pay for your sins because you chose not to put your faith in the one true holy God that you can't stand who inhibits your so-called enlightened freedom. And let me tell you about the enlightened freedom you brought on American society. In my video before this one, I read this vulgar talk, vile living and visual immorality, talking about universities and their feminine studies and what they're telling females to spit, swear, cuss, and swagger like a man. When I go to my break room, Wednesday, because we have Monday and Tuesday off, the women there do not act like ladies. There are two women in there that I can name off the top of my head that actually might be the closest to being closer to ladylike, but the rest, no way. Enlightened? Feminists are in more bondage than a guy shackled in chains in a jailhouse cell. But they're blind. And of course, God, the God of this world, which is Satan, is going to shout at them, You're free! You don't have to listen to a bunch of men. They're all chauvinistic, misogynistic pigs. If only the veil could be pulled from your eyes, feminist, then you'd wake up to your destructive philosophies that are ruining our children, ruining sexuality. And I think it's interesting. I, I would have thought that with feminists being so anti-male that they'd really be against all the pornography out there. They're not. You don't hear even a whimper from the feminist camp. Not one. Because feminists are all about choice. Even if those choices mean that it's okay for Hollywood to have the freedom of speech and expression to make polluting movies and foul stuff. And then we got the stupid video games like Car Theft San Andreas. And, and we're teaching kids how to steal cars and knock people off in video game entertainment form. <clears throat> and the American male, he's been reduced to a sorry sap of a man who the only thing he's controlling is all hunched over going, dee, 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 I'm getting the high score, man. You talk about a pathetic sight. Men aren't slaying dragons anymore. They're not crossing oceans anymore. They're not doing anything anymore. I could go on. We're going to deal with men. It's coming. I'm I'm getting my collective thunderstorm energy going for the men, and they're going to get it right between the eyes. We men let this feminism triumph. We didn't stand up, and we should have shut it down a long time ago. But 
when we live in a non-Christian world, the Bible said things are going to get worse and worse. But the stay-at-home mom, keep doing your job. Don't despair. Don't listen to the lies. Turn off the television. Quit watching The View with all the flaky women in the white media that are making way too much money, spin doctoring everything, and lauding liberalism and attacking Christians and stay-at-home mothers and homeschool people and all that. I'm tired of it. Start tuning in to God's Word. Start tuning in to some good, wholesome teaching of something called truth. If you get something out of my channel, tune into that. But do not make my channel your church. And do not put me on a pedestal because I have feet of clay and I have plenty of problems myself. I'm just speaking out because I'm tired of all this stuff. Somebody needs to do it. Pacific still has fire in his veins. You know, but I still got a little volcanic activity in me. That's why I like the Pacific. There's volcanoes all over the place out there. Volcanoes are cool, especially when they explode all over the place. stay-at-home moms, I believe in you. My mother stayed home, the one that adopted me. She was a tyrant. She was abusive. She was domineering. She did not show love to her husband at all. Her husband went to work to the insurance offices in downtown Los Angeles. He provided her a very nice lifestyle, very good living. And all she did was fight him put him down, make fun of him, and push him into other rooms, and push him away when he tried to hug her. And this is what I see feminist women doing all across this land. They're horrible to the males. My mother nearly destroyed me. I struggled with my identity for years. I was terrified of her well into my 30s. And then something finally snapped inside of me and said, what am I doing? I'm an adult now. She has no control over me. The only control she has is if I let her have it. Men, we need to be men. We do not bow down to women. We do not bow down to them at all. Women need to respect their husbands. Men, you need to love your wives and you need to treat her like a lady and encourage her to be a lady and let her be feminine and don't make her a football loving, pickup truck screaming lunatic. I like my pickup truck and I'm okay with a woman liking my pickup truck, but I still like a lady who's a lady. I don't mind if a woman wears jeans. I don't mind if she gets behind a football game or two, but I am tired of women swinging all the way over to the pendulum and becoming more male than female. I think it's perfectly okay for the men to be out in the living room yelling and shouting at the football game while the ladies are in the kitchen cooking and talking and enjoying lady stuff. What's wrong with that? Man. I'd rather have a bunch of ladies. You know, I went to church today. I went back to a church that... I had went away from because I'd went there when I was married to the wife of 14 years. They sing the old hymns. They have a beautiful choir, and they actually have an orchestra up there that plays stringed instruments, and the preaching is good. And I actually paid attention today, guys. In the Sunday school class I'm in, the women are my age or older, and uh, they're married. And I have to say, I kind of looked at them, and they said hello, and were glad to see that I was back. And, I actually wondered what had happened to the gal I dated because I had brought her there a few times. And I said, well, she moved on. But I looked at them and I thought, you know what? They're ladies. They're wearing dresses. They look nice. They're sweet. They're not talking tough. They're not talking like men. And I thought, one of my viewers said, the problem, Pacific, is you've been around nothing but a bunch of losers. I'm starting to agree with that. And I'm starting to realize I need to start running in different swimming in different oceans or something here. And it's hard because I don't have a college degree and stuff like that. I run with bus drivers and there's some good people out there, don't get me wrong, but I really wish I had the opportunity to move up into a different environment where I could surround myself with people that actually are an encouragement to me to grow and soar with eagle's wings. Unfortunately, I spend more time hanging around a bunch of pigeons and you know what pigeons do? Ooh, ooh. Picking trash. You know, I like pigeons. I actually like pigeons. They're cool birds, but they are kind of like flying rats. I'm getting off on many rabbit trails because it all applies. When kids have a solid foundation by a loving, biblical, Bible-reading, God-fearing mother, 
They tend to do better in life. They tend to avoid promiscuous sex and porn and crap. I know women that will not have a TV in their house and homeschool their kids. And I know people whose kids respect and show manners into their 20s and 30s and are very kind, quality people because mother refused to play career and put her children first. And the husband got behind her. I don't want to sound like focus on the family. Focus on the family has its problems. I believe Dobson is an empire builder, but there are programs, ladies, that he has that are very good advice. Don't turn them off. Just take things with a grain of salt. We must get back to family. I did not have solid family life. And I still see today where I have spun off compass many times because of that. I don't always walk true north because sometimes I make dumb, dumb, dumb decisions. And I've learned, ladies, I've learned to treat women as something that is to be used. It's like, well, you're not going to have a long-term relationship with a quality lady. They don't exist or they don't want me. And the ladies I do date tend to be throwaway ladies, or women, I should say. I'm amazed at how many women are involved in promiscuous sex, and they say they want a long-term relationship, and then they really don't. They're screwing around with one guy after another. It used to be that only men were accused of doing that. Now they're involved in it just as much as men are. I do want a quality woman in my life, but boy, she's going to have to accept me and my failures and my past. I'm not talking about failures now, but past failures. I don't know if I'm going to find it. Not in this country. But... I believe that God shows blessing and favor to a woman who tries to obey his word, not the way of the world. The world is very pressing, very oppressive, and very pressuring to today's woman. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you follow God's ways, you have peace and you have confidence. Don't let the world mock you. Don't listen to that. Put your hand up quiet and say, hey, 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 hold your laughter. When you get at heaven's threshold, and I get at heaven's threshold, I hope we have the chance to be standing next to each other. We'll see what God has to say about all this. But until then, reserve your mocking until later. We need more good children out there. We need more mothers out there. Moms. Mom, where a kid goes home, and at 20, 30, 40, 40, 50 years old says, the most important woman in my life was my mother. I love her. You don't hear that much anymore, do you? Folks, the most important man in my life was my father. I carry some guilt myself. I was married, I was divorced, and I have a son spiraling. She's not raising him in the fear and admonition of the Lord at all. She's part of the feminist lie. And everything's all the male's fault. There are times, viewers, when I want to stop making these videos because I have an acute sense of guilt and I have a very acute awareness of my shortcomings. And I think, who am I to give advice to people? But then I stop and go... I have every right to give advice because I'm learning from my mistakes and what better voice to talk about pro-family and pro-holiness and pro-God than myself who screwed up at all levels. I don't want to hear it from somebody who was born and raised in a perfect Christian environment and had the perfect American middle class dream. It means nothing to me. But give me somebody who's little by little awakening and though he's full of faults and problems and struggles with this and that, and he's trying to get back closer to the flame and, and militantly defends this as absolute truth. I think there's more people that want to hear what I have to say because I'm keeping it real. Ladies, keep being ladies. Don't lose heart. Feminists, get on your face and repent. Get over yourself. Quit fighting males because you're really fighting God. If you had a bad man in your life, Go to God about it. He hears your heart and your pain and tell them all. He knows how to deal with the bumbling idiots out there that messed up your life. 
But quit blaming all of us men. Quit fighting us. Quit competing us. And quit trying to be just like us. You're a woman. You have breasts and nipples and a vagina for a reason. You bear children for a reason. Fulfill your calling and quit trying to deny it. I'm so tired of it. Be ladies and men be men. And don't be shamed and stop being sissies and stop being bullied and cowered back into a corner by a bunch of manginas. Get away from them. If you can't change them, get away from them. And I'm telling you, we men need to find a way to start our own dang community. We'll call it Pacificville, man. <laughs> I'm joking. We'll call it Burn the Underville. I mean, I could think of a million people. Wouldn't it be fun if we could all get jobs and just, like, buy up a bunch of land? We all have our own house and mind our own business, but we're a community that watches out for each other, and the only people are allowed that people that have like minds. Boy, the news would be all over that. <laughs> okay, this is Pacific signing off. Stay-at-home moms, you rock. Keep on keeping on. God bless you. This is Pacific signing off. Bye-bye.